Treasure of Captain William Kidd from Treasure Diaries. William Kidd was born in Dundee, Scotland, in 1645, the son of John Kidd a seaman, and his wife Bessie Butchert. He migrated to New York in the 1680s where he met and married Sarah Bradley Coxort, a wealthy widow. William Kidd started out as a privateer, hired by European royals to attack foreign ships. When his crew insisted on attacking the Quadig merchant, a large Armenian ship laden with treasures on the voyage of Indian Ocean, Kidd found himself on the wrong side of the British government. He was hanged in London in 1701, as a warning to other pirates. Legends persist about Captain Kidd and the treasure, some believe he buried in the Caribbean, and he remains one of history's most famous and fascinating pirates. During the war between England and France in the 1690s, Kidd became a successful privateer in charge of the vessel the Blessed William, defending American and English trade routes with the West Indies. He was commissioned by the English government to take charge of an expedition against pirates in the Indian Ocean. Kidd's public mission was to rid the sea of pirates, but it was probably understood by his backers that he would also take every opportunity to capture any enemy ships that had valuable cargo. The 17th century was a tumultuous time, there was a grey area between being privateers attacking enemy shipping with government sanction as part of the war effort versus those plundering and smuggling purely for profit. At that time, New York profited handsomely from the pirate trade. Goods were smuggled into the colony and many powerful public figures shared the booty. Poor Captain Kidd was not very adept at finding pirates. The mood of his crew turned ugly and mutiny was in the air. Finally his crew forced him to turn pirate himself. In late January 16, 98, the Quidda merchant was sighted rounding the tip of India. Kidd and his crew attacked and took the ship, the cargo was silk, muslin, calico, sugar, opium, iron and saltpetre and worth a rumoured £70,000. The Quidda merchant, renamed the Adventure Prize, was kept by Kidd, as he was forced to abandon and sink his now leaking ship. Unfortunately for Kidd, it was now two years since he had begun his voyage as pirate and in that time there had been a change of attitude in England toward piracy. Piracy was to be stamped out and was now a criminal act. Kidd finally arrived in the West Indies in April 16, 99 to find that he was now deemed to be a pirate and that the American colonies were gripped by pirate fever. Up and down the coast, everyone was on the hunt for pirates. Unbeknownst to Kidd, he had been declared a pirate by the British government also. Kidd managed to negotiate a pardon from the English authorities for his actions, claiming he was forced to piracy by his crew. The New England governor, Lord Richard Belmont, himself an investor in Kidd's voyage, had him arrested on July 7, 1699 in Boston. He was sent to England in February 1700. The shamelessly rigged trial started on May 8 and was completed the next day. The verdict was that Kidd was guilty of the murder of one of his crew and guilty of multiple acts of piracy. Captain William Kidd was hanged on May 23, 1701. The first rope put around his neck broke so he had to be strung up a second time with repetition of same event. Then he was strung third time and succeeded. 
His corpse was placed in a gibbet at the mouth of the Thames River and left to rot, as an example to other would-be pirates. His English backers, though tainted by the piracy scandal, kept their estates and power. Kidd buried a large amount of his treasure on Gardiner's Island, a famous rendezvous for pirates. Kidd buried a chest and a box of gold, a bundle of quilts, and four bales of goods, two bags of silver, a small bundle of gold, gold dust of about a pound weight, a sash, and a pair of worst stockings. Captain William Kidd is the most ubiquitous gentleman in history. If his earnings in the gentle craft of piracy were frugally kept, he possibly left some pots of money in holes in the ground between Key West, Florida, and Halifax, Nova Scotia. The belief that large deposits of gold were made at Dunderberg, Cronest, New York City, Coney Island, Ipswich, the marshes back of Boston, Cape Cod, Nantucket, Isles of Shoals, Money Island, Ocean Beach, the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, and elsewhere caused numerous reckless expenditures in the hopes of recovering doubloons and guineas. The lid of an iron chest had been uncovered when the figure of a headless man came bounding out of the air, and the work was discontinued right then. Monhegan Island, off the main coast, contains a cave, opening to the sea, where it was whispered that treasure had been stored in care of spirits. On Damariscotta Island, near Kennebec, Maine, is a lake of salt water, which, like dozens of shallow ones in this country, is locally reputed to be bottomless and this island, too, has been held in fear as haunted ground. Appledore, in the Isles of Shoals in Maine, was another such a hiding place, and Kidd put one of his crew to death that he might haunt the place and frighten searchers from their quest. Kidd's plug is a part of the craggy steep known as Crow Nest, on the Hudson River. It is a projecting knob, like a bung closing an orifice, which is believed to conceal a cavern where the redoubtable captain placed a few barrels of his wealth. The Rock Hill Estate in Medford, Massachusetts, was plagued by a specter that some thought to be that of a New Hampshire farmer who was robbed and murdered there, but others say it is the shade of Kid, for iron treasure chests were found in the cellar that behaved like that on the Piscataqua River sinking out of sight whenever they were touched by shovels. Misery Islands, near Salem, Massachusetts, were dug over, and under spiritual guidance, too, for other installments of Mr. Kidd's acquisitions, but without avail. It takes no less than half a dozen ghosts to guard what is hidden in Money Hill, on Shark River, New Jersey, so there must be a good deal of it. William Kidd, by name Captain Kidd, died on May 23, 1701, in London, 17th century British privateer and semi-legendary pirate who became celebrated in English literature as one of the most colorful outlaws of all time. Fortune seekers have hunted his buried treasure in vain through succeeding centuries. In London in 1695, he received a royal commission to apprehend pirates who molested the ships of the East India Company in the Red Sea and in the Indian Ocean. Adding to the intrigue around Kidd's history is where exactly all his treasure went. Before he was put to death, the convicted pirate alleged to have buried some of his loot in the Caribbean. On his way to Boston, surely knowing he was being hunted, Kidd stopped in various places to secrete some of his valuable bounty for safekeeping. In 1955, a search of Block Island was conducted using sophisticated equipment that could detect treasure beneath the ground. 
It didn't turn up anything of value. If Kid did hide a secret treasure hoard on Block Island, he certainly hid it well. Perhaps most interestingly of all, though, some of his booty is said to have been buried on one of the world's most famous islands, Liberty Island. Despite generations of treasure hunters who have attempted to verify this claim, nothing has ever been discovered. Instead, we're left with a story that has greatly inspired the fascination we have with pirates like Kid. Thank for watching guys and see you in the next video.